Hi, I'm Penelope Bartner, the Artistic Director of Barking Spider Visual Theatre, and I am sitting in one of the rooms from the House of Dreams. The inspiration for the House of Dreams really came from the house itself. I was looking at Jung and Jung's theories about dreams and how houses manifest within our dreams. When you enter the house, it's this red hallway and we've installed hanging men in the form of suits and hats to give a feeling of a house that was once inhabited by men. The green room we've called the camera obscura. It's quite dark, but everything's glittering and beautiful on the table. And also the sound of people eating dinner and then the people burst out laughing. And it is the nightmare of humiliation. <laughs> The white room is set in a Victorian style and within that room you bear witness to a seance but the people who are conducting the seance have long since gone. The blue room is filled with glowing rabbits and they're all hovering over this child's bed and it's a very dark room and there's the sound of a forest and of time going slightly wrong. So it is the child's experience of nighttime. The kitchen is a nod to the buried terracotta army of China. So bringing the outside world in, which happens in dreams, the kitchen is filled with sand and it's as if we've found or unearthed a tiny army in the kitchen that belonged to Mr. Johnson. When you walk up the stairs, you're once again surrounded by men's suits and it's got this real feeling of masculinity about it. Then if you go into the dressing room, the floor is covered in a big circle of grass and lots of anthuriums, which are those red flowers that are colloquially called naughty boys. And Mr. Johnson, when he was a little boy, kicked a football through a window and smashed the glass. So we've used broken china from the actual collection as part of the installation. And the room is the nightmare of the father, in a way. The upstairs bedroom, which is the room I'm sitting in, is very spare. And around it, you'll see these images of people all facing sideways. So no, no one's actually looking at you. But if you look at the window, there's this giant rabbit. But if you go into the detailing of the rabbit, it's filled with monsters. So it is the room, again, of a child's nightmare. To find flowers growing in a roof cavity is dreamlike. And when I've walked through with visitors from the collection, people have looked up and gone, oh. and that, uh, that for me is capital, that's what I want <laughs> as an artistic director is to have people going, oh. Probably the most foreboding dream experience in the house is the room at the back of the house upstairs. When you walk in, there are piles and piles of these magazines that belong to Mr. Johnson. And within them are old shoe boxes, all tied up tightly with rope, with dolls trying to escape. And this room in the center of it is a doll's house. So it's playing with scale. When we fly in our dreams, if you're flying around, often things are much smaller or sometimes much larger, depending on what happens in the dream. So if I had a favorite room, it would probably be the upstairs yellow room because it is the most berserk. It's a black and white checked floor. And I looked at the floor and thought of a chessboard and the room title is From Dirt to Gold and it is the dream of coming from poverty and making it rich, which was something that Mr. Johnson experienced. At the Johnson Collection, it's always changing. There's always new ideas and new artists and new installations. It's a great museum to visit.